Welcome back to the Plays With Cars YouTube channel and another episode of Miniatures Monday. Today we have slot cars. Uh, these five specifically because I picked them up yesterday uh, or two days ago at a vintage store in Portland for the grand total of 20 bucks for all five. Um, I was not looking for them specifically. I was actually furniture shopping and they had a cabinet full of curios and Hot Wheels and things like that. And I poked around in there and these were in the back. Um, and it was definitely worthwhile picking up because I don't know if uh, any of you priced new slot cars lately, but they run over 50 bucks uh, for a new one. So if you can find something, especially ones that look like they could run without much work uh, for cheap, pick them up to race, especially if you're racing with your kids, which is what I do. Anyways. Uh, these ones here, uh, we'll go over them here a little bit. These two right here are Tyco. Tyco was a huge company in the 1980s. They were actually the second largest toy producer behind Mattel. Uh, and they actually sold out to Mattel. Um, in fact, here is a <clears throat> last of the Tyco uh, cars. A little uh, Corvette here. And then this is what Hot Wheels did to it, Mattel, when they bought it out. So cheesy red line, sparkly paint, big chrome motor, make it cooler looking. Um, that's the difference between a Tyco and a Mattel version. Uh, you see the chassis are absolutely identical. Tyco did nothing. Um, this one actually has a little bit different winding color. Um, but performance-wise, they're practically identical. Anyways, so these are Tycos. Uh, we've got a vintage... A Corvette ZR1 and a Lamborghini. I actually have no interest in keeping either of these. I intend to clean them up, put them on eBay, and sell them off and make my 20 bucks back and then some, hopefully. And that is because I already have a yellow Lamborghini. Uh, this is actually from my childhood. I've had this car pff, 25, 30 years. Um, and you can see it's still fantastic. So the one I picked up is also really nice and a very similar color and stuff like that so i don't need to do anything to it i'm gonna clean it up a little bit make sure it runs and post that one up on ebay uh, and then the corvette uh same kind of thing i have one again from my childhood days mine is white with white stripes um this is actually a car that was blue it was a glow in the dark color and i put it in some um stuff called wesley's bleach white which strips paint off of plastic uh, that'll be a good Tech Tip Tuesday video. Anyways, um, but it left the tampo weirdly. Uh, and I just thought it was the coolest looking thing when I pulled it out of that solution. Um, I keep meaning to put this on eBay uh, for like a ridiculous number to see if I can get some collectors to blow their minds because it still has the tampo. <laughs> um, and then tell the story after that. But anyways, that's my car. This ZR1 is actually really nice, uh, but I don't need two Corvettes in the collection. So I will also clean that one up, get it running, and get that one uh, on its way as well. Uh, let's see here. And then we've got these. Now these are AFX. AFX is kind of where you want to be. If you are serious about racing cars at all and you want them to be fast, you want AFX. So Aurora was actually the people that started slot cars way back in the 60s. I believe it was 62 with the vibrators and then Thunder Jets in 64. Uh, AFX came along in 70. Modern AFX, though, is owned by Tomy. Uh, Tomy is a Japanese manufacturer and they are fantastic. Their stuff is just top of the line. I mean, this is a modern Tomy body here of, you know, a Mercedes uh, Le Mans car. And they're even wilder than that now. Anyways, Tomys are fast. This is uh, a modified Tomy chassis. And this sucker, like, I mean, it's ridiculous how fast these are. Uh, so if you want fast, you want Tomy. Their AFX stuff, this is their baseline. Uh, and you can see the difference uh, between that and the racing one. So these long... Thin magnets here are the much faster ones. These kind of big fat ones are kind of slower. Um, so this is the Tomy you want if you want to go fast. This Tomy is still pretty good though. Um, but yeah, the so anyways, parts are really easy for Tomys. They run well. Um, they have great bodies on them. Um, in fact, I've got one here that I will match up with this one. This one will actually add to the collection because it's kind of cool. Um, and then these two... I uh, don't know what to do with it yet. This one's missing its little wing um, in the back, which is unfortunate because the rest of it's really nice. I might try to just find that part. Uh, and you can see these are the fast slimline chassis. 
This one is actually a Scale Masters promo car. Uh, and this one could be valuable. So I was going to see uh, what the story on that one was. But definitely interested in adding those to my growing Tomy collection. Uh, AFXs are super fun to race with. Really fast. Uh, and like I said, they're new. You can buy these in um, uh, like Hobby Town USA's. And they run about 50 bucks. Uh, so yeah, picking up a couple of these, three of these, <laughs> and a couple of Tycos for 20 is definitely worth it. Um, anyways, some of the other ones. So back to Tyco, you notice these are a what's called a slimline chassis. Uh, Tyco also does a thick chassis. You see how much wider that is and how the attachment point is different on the body. Funnily enough, a Miata is on the big one, right? Um, this is also called an HP7 style chassis, and the original like Tyco Pro from the 1960s mounts up to this chassis. Uh, this is what they used for the longest time. They actually came out with the, the slim line for their uh, Indy cars and F1s, uh, such as this. So those are Tyco. Tycos are really good. You could still get stuff for Tyco. Mattel hasn't made anything in years. Um, parts are getting kind of hard to come by here and there, but there was so much of them made that they're just super, super common. Uh, this is the next most common car you'll come across. It's called Lifelike. Uh, you can see it's a totally different chassis design. And the body mounting is weird. Everybody else kind of has like tabs in the middle of the body. See the tabs there, tabs in the middle, right? Lifelike does the four corners with four posts. Um, so it's just a very different way of doing the bodies. They actually are more secure, like front to back. You can kind of rock these bodies on the chassis back and forth like that because they, of where the attachment point is. You can't do that with the lifelike. They just kind of sit, uh, which is nice. But anyways, lifelike was really cool. These were actually originally called row car. Um, and the older row cars, they had like um, white six-spoke wheels on them. They are super valuable, um, really, really rare, awesome body styles like flared 240Zs and Thunderbird Turbo Coupes and Bizarro stuff. Um, when they became lifelike, they started doing just regular stuff like NASCARs and whatnot. But they did some, some cooler stuff too, um, like here's a 70 Boss 302 Mustang, which is kind of wild, like nobody else had done that. Um, but lifelikes run well, parts are pretty easy to come by, um, good car to pick up. Now all of these will work on all the same tracks, so you don't have to worry about like, oh, I got a Tyco track, I can only run Tyco. No, they all work uh, on the same tracks. Uh, so grab a track, use it, grab every car, it will all be good. Uh, the other stuff that's out now is from Auto World. Auto World is an adult collector company. They own um, Johnny Lightning and uh, AMT, uh, Ertel, um, MPC, just a whole bunch of really awesome old hobby brands, and they've re-released all of the old, they bought the rights to the old uh, Aurora stuff, the Thunder Jets and the original AFX. And this right here is actually an original AFX style chassis called a five gear. You can see it's got a pancake motor in it instead of a slim inline. And uh, they sell these new with all sorts of really wild bodies on them, like funny cars and dragsters and pro stocks and they are awesome they are so much fun to race the kids and i um we probably have more fun with these than anything else they are a little slower um, but because they're slower the kids can can kind of control them better um and without having really good traction magnets on them they they tend to drift around the corners which makes it a lot of fun too um, and that's how original slot cars were is they they drifted everywhere um, but yeah that's that's some slot car, and this is actually, I'm going to give you a little sneaky peek here of my racing case. These are the cars that I race with, like when I go to um, stores that have tracks and things like that. These are kind of the cars that I normally use for racing or play with the kids and things like that. Um, i got a whole bunch of other cases full of like more collector stuff. Um, if you guys are interested... Comment below and let me know, um, and we will totally do some more videos with slot cars. Uh, got the track set up around the Christmas tree right now. We can uh, show some slot car racing too, and if that's something you would like to see. Um, but yeah, that was Miniatures Monday, and today was slot cars.